Welcome back to another edition of Switched to Linux. And today we want to have a brief look at Plasma 6 as this has just come out. Now, should we jump to Plasma 6 right away? I'm just going to go ahead and start by saying not yet. I would give it about a month or two to get a few bugs worked out. And there are still indeed quite a few bugs. Uh, there are several issues on known issues with Plasma 6, the Framework 6, probably even the uh, Gear 24. This is a meta, uh, mega release, excuse me. So the KD, KDE Framework upgrades to 6, Plasma upgrades to 6, KDE uh, Gear Framework changes to 24.02. So there are a lot of potential things going on here. Even in some of the many articles, if you've read any of the articles about this, everybody's talked about the 3D Cube, and the 3D Cube is not yet here. I was actually looking for that, and uh, if you go down and have a look at the new features, it takes us right on over to a a bug, and if you scroll all the way down, because that bug was actually started a, a couple years ago when it was first removed, and now down here at the bottom, since all of these articles are coming out, this guy asks here at Dunn says, so Plasma 6, we will find desktop cube effect. Pranaja says, yes, Plasma 6 has it, as Nate said in the comment from right before yours, as noted in the version fixed in field of the bug. And uh, Scott says, just installed Plasma 6. This was not fixed. While it is true, cube appears under the window management. It does not appear under the virtual desktop switching animation which is the most important part about the cube before it was removed. And now I didn't even find it under the window management. I was looking for it everywhere. Uh, sadly, I don't seem to have permissions to reopen the bug. This says there's already a bug report. Uh, thanks for filing the bug. So if you click on over there, you'll find that there is indeed a bug report modified uh, just a couple days ago here indicating that, yeah, it's not there yet. So um, that's just every article talked about the 3D cube effects. Everyone was waiting for it, and it's not quite yet here. I personally see that as fairly minor. Now, uh, what do I think uh, overall having a brief look at it? Well, I there's things I, I really like about it, and there's some things I'm not a huge fan of. So uh, mm, lipstick and rouge, but I'm not a huge fan of the... Uh, animated art, uh, nor the brand new floating panel option. I actually think it looks a lot more amateurish. Uh, now, if you do maximize any window, the panel you'll see does go back into maximizing. But this is extraordinarily minor because it's super simple to fix. If you don't like it, just go ahead and enter your panel edit mode and toggle this floating off and close it up here and booyah we're done so uh again i don't really care i do like the defaults uh how it has some transparency behind it i you know i i don't really care about that i frankly i like the fact that's an option it's always been an option they're just highlighting it by default now you can always go in and do that of course your biggest change is that wayland is now the default now, when I first installed this out of the box, uh, I was actually having an issue with Wayland was not letting me go up to the full 1080p screen resolution. Um, but after running a couple updates on the um, uh, through Discover, running a first batch of updates, rebooting the system, I was able to get Wayland working. Now, I've not tested Wayland entirely. I haven't looked at my my battery of fun screen recorders that seems to be a hodgepodge of working, not working, completely dependent on the distribution, and that is why I still prefer X. X always works, <laughs> regardless of your distribution or your desktop environment. X works. Wayland you have to mess with it for the distro. You have to mess with it with a desktop environment. That's something I've been looking at quite closely. But overall, Wayland uh, supposedly does work very well in this. I haven't put it, put it through the full test, but the default is indeed Wayland. Oh, one thing that I did find right away, um, I was actually, uh, these buttons were not working before. They must have fixed themselves up after... Uh, uh, after your um, uh, my updates and a couple different reboots, I tried them several different times and I could not get any of those buttons to work. They're working now. That's good. I thought initially that was Wayland, uh, but it ended up uh, not doing not working on X either. So that happens to be that. 
Now, as far as other processes, uh, this is not something new to this version, but uh, new to a more recent version of Plasma. The update process behaves now more like Windows. You go in and uh, if you go in to see your update section in Discovery and you push your updates, it's going to download everything and stage it, but you have to reboot and then sit there and watch your computer screen while it updates. Why are we borrowing the worst features of Windows in the Linux community, folks? But Oh well, that's what it is. That being said, Discover does have a lot new, uh, a lot of new features. This really has made a lot of good, uh, a good progress in the last couple of years. If you remember when Discover first came out in uh, early, I think it was at Plasma Five. I forget. It was an abominable mess. Now it actually is good and functional, a little bit fast. You can see that we have a flat pack available here. And one of the things you can do now inside of your settings is you can go in and you can make Flatpak your default source, in which case the default settings will give you Flatpaks instead of repository. By default, the repository is indeed the default. Now, they did talk about the possibility of making Snap also default. I did install SnapD on the system through the terminal, but uh, it's still not showing up in here. There might be a plugin or something I'm missing, but since I don't really care for Snaps, I'm going to worry about that right this second. Uh, the other big feature that we have is, um, by default now, double-click on icons is there, not single-click. So, of course, Plasma, by default, used to be a single-click, and then you'd have to go into your uh, your uh, Dolphin settings here and toggle that over to double-click. Now, double-click is the default, which does bring Plasma in line with nearly every other desktop environment. Again, you do have the option to go back to single click, just like the floating panel. They're just toggling some things that make a little bit more sense to some people. And the other cool feature that we have is uh, they finally, not sure why it took them this so long, but we finally actually have wallpaper inside of your basic settings. So that's kind of nice. Um, of course, you used to just have to do the wallpaper explicitly over here, configure desktop and wallpaper. They have finally put it inside of this uh, this particular setting. And so now you can uh, go ahead and make those changes over there. So that's really nice. Um, other features that uh, I believe are new, if we look at our overall theming with colors and themes. Now, one of the things that they were working on doing is getting gl gl better global accents. Those aren't working yet, so they left those out. There's a lot of things in the proposal method that uh, they've left out, just an FYI. But you do have to do some color scheme options here as well. So you do have the option to make some of those changes already uh, inside of your, your main settings, although it doesn't apply to all the window border settings quite yet. So that is uh, one of the things I found. I was finding some issues changing between your uh, your different uh, panels. Let's see if I can repeat those or if those are fixed now. Okay, those might have been fixed in the updates or the subsequent renewals. Oh, this is slick. I like this. This is beautiful. Ooh, I'm just going to have to keep it like this. This is nice. So uh, you do have the combination now as well where you can... Uh, uh, switch behind between these guys here. This will give you like darker on your borders and then light around the boxes. I do like this. I'm privy to this. This is beautiful. So I really do think that this new new version of Plasma really is a great uh, a great addition to things. It does work pretty nice. Now uh, other things we do have we have uh, a new uh, desktop switcher. Now, the first couple times I tried running this, I was not actually getting the desktops off the top. I'm not sure what happened where it fixed it. Maybe it was that update that did it. But this is the new view where you can quickly jump back and forth between the desktops. Now, we're doing this with Meta W. That was not clear until I went through and read through all of the documentation to get all of uh, my key bindings correct. But uh, there is uh, there is what, what that's going to work. And I think Meta, is it Meta G is the old method here that we can use to, to flip through those. Uh, and also though, if we um, uh, if you do pull up a number of different windows and things, let's just pull up just a bunch of stuff. And uh, what we can then see is there's a, also a new, um, a new alt tab switcher as well. Let's just pull up a bunch of things. I wanna have at least five or six things open here. Open VLC. There we are. And 
here is uh, with your alt tab switcher, you can go back and forth. You can see it organizes things quite a bit nicer. So a lot of this update in Plasma, there were a couple big things that they did in it. The first is really pushing that Wayland first and making sure that as many things worked under Wayland as conceivably possible. The second thing that they did is they really brought in some new theming and styles, bringing it in with in line with a lot more, maybe what we might call more modern systems. Of course, I'm a Luddite, so I don't really care, but uh, I do like the options. It is Linux. I love the options inside of this. I like the floating panels that they're there for those that want them, but I like the fact that I can set it back the way I always liked it. So that's always good. They also do have some system performance uh, bonus enhancements as well. So that's pretty good. Of course, the other thing, so unfortunately, they're pulling in from things like Windows is, hey, look at this. We have a notification for getting browser extension plugins. Oh, Lord, please don't get me all these notification things. Um, but anyway, it's not a not a huge deal. That was just one off thing. I thought it was funny. So I thought I'd bring it up, you know, add a little bit of that negative energy into the video. But, uh, you know. So anyway, uh, this is uh, this is Plasma 6. It is very nice. I think it is excellent. Now, I would not jump to it right away. Uh, if you go back and have a look at the, um, if you do have a look at the, uh, let me go back and, uh, can't, oh, I can't restore the previous session. Interesting. Uh, if you do go back and have a look at the KDE uh, issues, there are still a number of bugs available. Uh, out here and those are going to get resolved and there were a number of things that are in the all of the press release articles that came out about it right before it launched uh, mentioned a lot of different things and um, uh, and oh, that's not the one I was looking for oh well um, a lot of those things got pushed off to, to 6.1 just because they weren't ready yet so it's almost a case where they had pushed too quick. Hey, here's what I was looking for. Look at that. So over here, we have a lot of known issues involved, and there are some new features, and some of these new features, like we said, the desktop cube aren't working there. A few of these things still aren't working and have been pushed out. Here's a few items postponed to 6.1 in progress. Make window title bars accent. We mentioned that one. Uh, session restore on Wayland. Um and postponed 6.1 not yet started so a few other options there as well and so i would not jump to it unless you absolutely have to just wait for a few of those bugs to be rolled out but for the most part it does look like a good functional system and um, i'm sure i'm going to see it on my raspberry pi soon unless of course i end up dropping my plasma off of the raspberry pi which is on my list of things to possibly do down the road in the future so uh, with that, there is a brief tour of Plasma 6 with the mega release involving the KDE Framework 6.0 and the KDE Gear 2402. And um, with that, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts about uh, KDE Plasma. Is this your favorite, not your favorite? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? And are you excited about playing with this new release? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.